the committee. Uh, is there any <coughs> thoughts on reconsidering, uh, excuse me, reconsidering any of our previous votes? Please note in order to make a motion or a second, you must be on the winning side of the previous vote. I, um, I wish to uh, committee to have a discussion about reconsidering the vote on the budget. Second. I don't believe you were in, in the winning side on that. So I can't second your motion? No, you cannot. Can someone who was on the winning side second my motion to reconsider the budget, please? I, I want to know. I want to note, Mr. Chair, I was not here for yeah. that as well as Mr. Ladd. Otherwise, I would be seconding it right now. I appreciate that. But I don't seem to be able to get a second. Oh, no. point of, point of, well, can you just make sure that it's, the second has to be on the winning side also? That is the rule that this committee established long ago. Well, you know, before this year even. Uh, no one will give consideration? For a second. Okay. Is there any other? Is there any other Warren articles that uh, we should entertain consideration on, reconsideration on? Article Frank. Mr. Frank wants to reconsider Article Four. Well, you can't. You weren't. I can't. I'm just throwing yeah, it. Out. Oh, I right. can't either. Yeah. So. so I had no motion for. Um, Tim, sure. I'm sure. you have to be on the winning side. Yeah. So you have to have voted yes. Yeah. On, on, on the last, no. on well, the last vote. vote. No. You, in this case, you would have to have voted uh, no to recommend. So in other words, you voted not to recommend in order to cause a reconsideration to take place. Uh, vote was three. We've had four. this rule in place for at least three years. Yeah. Is it right? Or is it your vote? Is not has been in place for at least three years. Okay, I don't hear anything else on for reconsideration. Jerry, one meeting. Excuse me. Yeah. Well set. Yep. All right. Um, I want to thank the people from uh, that came in and spoke in on SAU 90. I'm sorry I wasn't able to secure a second to get a reconsideration on the budget, uh, or apparently anything else for that matter. So uh, we are we have closed our consideration of SAU 90. No, I, 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 I don't mean to call, I don't mean no, to it's okay. Uh, it was a three to four. Excuse me. We're in a meeting here. Yeah. Um, yes. So uh, we're going to move on now to the time warrant. Why don't we go? Why don't we go to the other ones? Um, we've closed a public hearing. Well. And we already closed the public hearing at 9, 7:55. Uh, Ms. Bond. Could I make a comment to the public? Sure. I want to explain something, what's happening right now. Uh, Mr. DeLuca, myself, and Mr. Ladd, who were here to vote last time, all voted in favor for the SRO officer and the budget. Therefore, for the bu budget committee's rules, we cannot re make, make a motion to reconsider or to second that reconsideration. So therefore, we're sort of left at a standstill with everything for the two warrant articles that some of us would like to reconsider but don't have the ability to under the rules. So can you clarify that, that for the first one, too? Just so we know. So who would have to reconsider on that first People warrant article? Voted nay. Oh, just People voted nay. Yeah. Vote, yeah. So who voted nay? Yeah, who yeah, voted nay? Raise your hands. Yeah, you know it. Oh, I voted no on that one. Yeah, she's talking about it. On no. article one. I voted no on Article no. So I'm not so, so sure what that, why that matters. Yeah, yeah. It does matter. well, Jerry's in the majority on hold that. Hold on, hold it's on. It's been the minutes. The, the, the vote, those who voted no on Article 1 were as Warburton, right. myself, Zanoy, and Mora. So you would have to, so those four would have to say, you get, you. I, I am one of those, and I and I yeah. sought a motion right. for so a second to reconsider the budget. Yeah. I was not able to secure a second from the other three, so I am stuck. No, I, I made a mistake then, because I would have seconded. Oh, I, here we go. Oh. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. 
So is the committee okay with that belated second? We can proceed with reconsideration. Is there an objection? No. No objection to proceeding with the reconsideration on Article 1, the SAE 90 budget, correct? Okay. So uh, as you know, and since I made the motion, uh, I will tell you what inspired me to do this. When I voted no initially, I asked the superintendent what we would lose if the default budget won the day versus the proposed budget. She was unable to answer me. Um, excuse me, guys, one meeting. I don't think he knows that he understands what he just yeah, did. Yeah, I, I want to make sure he didn't do that. This is, this is confusing. We had seven votes against on that article. Three voted yes and four voted against. Right, you were one of the ones that I voted against. I was one of the four that voted against. Correct. Correct. You you were one of the four of them. Right? That's correct. So you you uh, put a motion out there. You were eligible to put a motion out there. Right. And and I thought you had to be on the winning side. I was on the winning side, as were you. Because it defeated. It was defeated. defeated. Yeah. Four to three. All right. So you were right. I, mean, you I didn't consider that a winning side necessarily. Well, you voted. I know. But I mean. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. So we're all clear on that. So let me let's proceed with the reconsideration, please. So um, when I got no credible, well, I got no substantial response to the question, what happens if the default passes, what do we lose? I was like, well, it's less than a $200,000 difference. So I was very much on the fence relative to that and, until I got the, the answer that I got. And tonight I'm hearing uh, things from the public, uh, for example, the need for the additional custodian which has a credible argument to me. Um, and so for that reason, I am concerned that maybe I, I would have fallen on the other side of the fence. So that's why I'm raising this for discussion. So you know, educate me why I ought not to change my vote, please. Well, I listened to the same things tonight. And I find it interesting that some of the comments is it was not just about the custodian. No, and, and, and what's interesting is, they, uh, we've heard people in the audience say they watched the meetings. Well, obviously they didn't, because not one, come on, come on. not one comment was made about. Well, I think there was one comment made, but the interventionist, my my terminology mm -hmm. position, mm -hmm. they didn't go in depth on that. There was also concerns by Mr. Zanoy, and rightfully so, about what he. I think you referred to him as accumulating cost every year. It seems like we're we're going up and up and up, and is never going the other direction. Um, my whole rationale, and I made it very clear, and we heard a lot about the school edition tonight. Let me be very clear that I was very supportive of the school edition, as I have with all the other school editions and school budgets and contracts. However, um, it does matter that 13 people, it only passed by 13, because there's still a lot of upset people in this town that thought that they didn't vote for the school edition, who grew up here and have kids here and have grandchildren, thought that the budget... Come on now, guys. The thought that the budget would be, uh, there'd be, a, you know, like a, a, take a break for a couple of years. And Mr. Pluff and I remember years ago, we used to do that. We'd have a couple of years with, just to give the taxpayers a break. It doesn't matter whether it's 1% or 13%. You add that with, we haven't even discussed the town warrant tonight with the, the huge, and, and we, we have a great town, but where does it stop? I mean, do we, we say 300000 next year is fine, and then 400000 the next year after that? Um, Jerry Zanoy brought up an unbelievable comment, which has carried me since last week, and actually even carried me into Portsmouth Hospital this weekend, if you believe it or not, on another family matter that I ran into somebody from Hampton that said, Brian, you guys are absolutely right. I'm paying $8,000 a year in taxes, and in the next two and a half years, I could go up to 11000 I can't escrow 1000 a month, and I have to sell the house. And by the way, a lot of school people have talked to me too. So let's be clear about one thing. Not everybody that's in favor of the schools don't disagree with what some of the things we're saying tonight. And so it's a very, and I would think that the public who's talking while I'm talking would give me a little credit. I have a wife that teaches in this system. You think this decision is easy for me? I mean, that's the, you should actually applaud me for being more fair. That I don't rub us, <laughs> wait a minute. And I don't rubber stamp things. And I took a lot of effort. And for those who think that, you know, all the teachers, they're going to fly away if this budget doesn't pass and everything else, it's baloney. And the bottom line is I have a responsibility 
just like every other elected board in this town, to represent the entire taxpayers. And, you know, as far as the chairman for this year and set, uh, setting forth, I think he's done an excellent job. And all we've done is debate, debate, and debate. And the stuff about rhetoric, high voices, low voices, give me a break. So let's just take a step back here. If the vote for reconsideration turns the budget around tonight, who knows? The taxpayers are still going to be the final choices. So, yeah. you know, yes. and, and either way, it's, it's going to be. But I think that to sit here and say that, you know, we didn't have this information or that, and maybe, like you said tonight, you've, you certainly were on the fence, and I know you were. Uh, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody the way they vote. We have two members here tonight that weren't here before. I, I fully suspect the vote probably will turn around. But the message at least is going to be sent that enough is enough. And it shouldn't be, you have $200,000 here, a million dollars here, $200,000. I'm just telling all of you that, you know, for somebody who's been around in this town for 40 years, uh, and I have children, and I have grandchildren, and I'm certainly, and by the way, I have several people in my family who are in schools, uh, in administrations in schools throughout this state uh, that I've communicated with and asked for their opinion on things. And uh, it, it's, I just, I just get a little nervous when I hear people, you know, like we don't know what we're talking about. And I, I will say for the record that we have two retired Liberty Mutual executives at this table. We have a retired, can I finish my statement? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> a retired uh, BAE executive at this table, retired uh, person who worked for, in the publishing business for years, retired executive to my left, a, a CPA to my right, uh, and, a, and a long time uh, contractor and person and plus an IET. The person I say this, so when we hear about the budget committee not knowing what they're talking about, I just want to say that. So go ahead and do it, but uh, please give us a little credit for, you know, believing what we believe in. Thank you. Thank you. Regina. Correction, I am not a CPA. I worked in a CPA firm oh, okay. for 10 years, and I average looking at about seven to eight budgets a week, just to let it go. Oh, good. Know. Well, I gave you a question. Yeah. Tim, look over here. Tim. Mr. LeBranch. Okay, I have a question. <clears throat> You, last Wednesday night, did this committee change the number that had been okay? That's my yes. question. No. You did not did change not. the number. Not on this one. So, oh, yeah. so if the voters in this town vote for this budget, then that position I heard about that is uh, intervention. Well, intervention is and Yeah, and, and I heard somebody say that if we have to send that person out of town, um, or well, one or two people, it's going to cost a lot more than that amount yes. of money. Um, and I, and I, just as a point as well, um, Bob Ladd and myself were at our own meeting down at the Hampton Beach Village District, and I think that I think that the um, if we're going to re-vote on this, I think you're going to see that there's going to be a change. Yeah. Well, in the vote. there's no if about it. We are re-voting on it. Thank you. Then uh, I, I believe that it'll probably yeah. change. Well, let's see what uh, happens. Mr. DeLuca, Thank you. also known as Mr. Frank. Yes. Uh, I, I would like to uh, just answer a couple of comments that were made. I am a taxpayer in Hampton, and my taxes are roughly over $9,000 a year. So I do support all these articles. And I know it's going to cost me a little bit more, but you know what? I believe in the children in this community. I believe in the school system, we've done an awful lot in this school system to improve the education and there is a greater need in the special ed department. So if my taxes go up another five, six, a thousand dollars, I don't care, okay? It's going to a worthy cost. And that $200,000 breaks out to about $24 a year. $24 a year, that's $2 a month. Okay? That's two packs of cigarettes for people that smoke right now. <laughs> or a pizza, all right? Or an 18 tape of beer, all right? So to me, $24 means absolutely nothing, okay? I am, I am definitely in favor of that article. I'll be happy to take your $24 contribution to my pocket later on after the meeting. <laughs> Anyone else wish to miss the lead? I think basically we have a choice. We bought a $26 million addition to the school buildings. 
And I would consider that like a very expensive automobile, and not voting this budget is not affording to pay the oil to keep yep. the motor running. Uh, we all have gone through schools and, and been taught by teachers, but I don't hold myself out as an expert on school administration, school budgeting mechanics, and I would defer to the professionals who come before us that they represent their opinions honestly and genuinely, and I found no evidence to not feel that way about them. Okay, Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, I voted no, and, and I'll tell you what I, what I did. I fought like hell to get the school through with the team that we were on. I endorsed that, I fought for that. Put myself out there for that, okay? But, you know, I'm sitting here on a committee as a late substitute off the bench, so to speak. And the tide is rising, you know, the water level is rising. Uh, the town is up over 4%, 4.9 or something like that. This one's up 198,000. And you look at why it's up, and you see they want to add a janitor, they want to add a a special ed case manager, and they want to give some raises and so on. But why do we always have to add? Can't we, can't we understand our costs and start reducing a little bit? We're spending over 21000 a year per pupil right now. If you take the actual costs that we're impacted with and divide by the number of students, it's, it's over 21000 a year. I mean, you know, where are we going? We have to develop an attitude of doing more with equal or less, I believe. I come from that school. Do more with equal or less, Jerry. That's the school I come from, okay? So I, I don't care if we raise a dollar to two dollars. I just have to understand why. Some of these warrants really, really got the goat of me when I saw security being requested. Money from the taxpayer being requested. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, everybody. You know, we are now in the process of reconsidering our vote on the budget. Right. And we need to listen to the, our fellow members and what, what they're offering us. When we hear the cat calls and the other comments from the audience, it distracts from our concentration. And we may not be giving the full consideration we might not otherwise give. So, Please continue, Mr. So, Zanoy. So, it's not always up. It doesn't always have to be up. If we sharpen our pencils and we begin to look at some of these costs and what drives them and so on, with 11 janitors, we can't do something. Can't, we can't do something to synergize ourselves such that we can get that extra space covered. No, we have to have it. We've got 15 special case managers, four guidance counselors, a welfare worker, 25 pa uh, the para uh, paraprofessionals. Okay, I think 23 or 25 are devoted to special ed. Though, I think I see I see wage scales that I question. I question some of these wage scales. It's how they get formulated. They should have job descriptions first. A professional agency come in and should, should look at those, evaluate them, find out the complexity of what's going on, weigh them, and cost them. I gotta see facts. I don't move on subjectivity or on emotion. But when I fight, I fight like hell on emotion. I believe that's, you know, I won't go into the school itself that we got built, but we always can't go up. The arrow can't always go up. Let's think about what we're requesting, how we can do things more cost effectively, and start showing the taxpayer, <laughs> stop stop asking for $300,000 warrant articles when there's only two schools now instead of three. Asking for security monies when in fact we got an $800,000 grant for security. All these things come into play in my head. That's why I voted no on this article. Thank you, Jerry. Anyone else wish to speak to the reconsideration on Article 1? Mr. DeLuca. I just want to clarify a few things, okay? As a member of the school board, we sat down and reviewed the budget. 
the budget that is going to the taxpayers in March. The original number was well over the 23582000 It was closer to $24 million. We reduced numbers. We cut where we could cut. We eliminated where we could eliminate, okay? The problem we face, okay, which seems to elude people on this board, is special education is mandated by the federal government, okay? It is in the default budget, but it is at a cost in other areas, all right? We are looking at programs to reduce those costs. As someone stated, it's over $100,000 to outsource a student, $100,000. We're putting in programs to eliminate that cost. We're putting in a position to help reduce that cost to the taxpayers because believe it or not, all right, without those programs, your cost would go up dramatically and you're gonna have to support those programs because it's mandated. You can't say to the federal government, I don't wanna educate that child. Okay, and our special ed enrollment has gone up. Normal enrollment is relatively flat over the last few years. Okay, but special ed is up, and we are accountable. Thank you. Dale, I Thank you, Frank. Dale, I don't even reply. Mr. Zanoy. You know, when you say those things like that, Frank, to me, it's a scare tactic. Just like if you don't have a cop in the school, we're going to have a shooting. I happen to vote. I, want to talk after. I happen to vote for the officer. Okay, but this is what I hear when you talk. Well, if you don't do this, we can have the outpost outsource, and that'll cost us three times. I have to see facts. Miss <laughs> uh, Regina Bonds. Not everybody gets outsourced. Thank you, Jerry. Miss Regina Bonds. Well, I thought Mr. DeLuca covered it very well, but you're right. There's a lot of outside forces. Put They're going to put more costs on us, actually. And that is fact, Jerry. All you got to do is go and look at it up online. And it's happening all over the place. And I understand your concerns. I understand everyone's concerns. But I'm telling you right now, this is not the budget or the Warren articles to cut ever. We're talking about children. We're talking about all these people that showed up here tonight. I'm sorry, but it's... That's the way it is. I mean, you want to offset the costs, then let's get some the school going and let's get some programs in it and let's help them out do that because I'm pretty sure the superintendent's got some ideas on that. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else wish to speak on the reconsideration of Article 1 <coughs> budget? I'm still confused. So Mr. I'm Moore. Gonna, I'm still confused why we're considering it. J J Jerry made a mistake. He voted against and he didn't second you right. He, he did second. He didn't want to. He did second. He said he did, but he, he was confused when he said it, is my point. Jerry, did you not second no, my no, motion? I didn't second him the first time. I was confused then. Right. But when he said, I'm on the winning side, you were one of four votes on the winning side. You know, I was confused. Then. So that, that's what that's what threw up. So are we done with the confusion? Okay. I'm not with confused. I'm confused anymore. I don't think. We'll have to go article by article to find out who was on the motion. Motion by John, seconded by Zanoy. That's clear. There's no confusion. You still right? second it. Yes. yes. Good. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 1? Whoa. Well, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative of the some of the comments that were made by the public uh, regarding the interventionists and the uh, need for the additional custodian. Uh, I also have to say that I'm, I'm being emotionally pulled the other direction as well by the uh, treatment that those who don't agree with uh, it are, are expressing uh, uh, excessive uh, commentary. But uh, <clears throat> I try not to let my emotions get in the way of my vote. So my inclination is to, uh, is to switch and uh, endorse this uh, article. We're talking something slightly less than $200,000 between the two. Um, and I think the interventionist, the argument that was made there is, is pretty solid. And I think the need for the custodian, the key, key kind of 
touched on it as well, uh, has a credible argument to it as well. And that apparently is about the $200,000 difference between the two. And so my inclination is to uh, favor this. Uh, any further comments? If not, uh, I hear a motion to... Move to vote. I have a motion by Mr. LeBranch to recommend Article 1, mm -hmm. seconded by... Mr. Jones. Mr. DeLuca. Any? Oh, you're going to second it? I did. Okay. It now seconded it. There's no. Is there any further discussion? No. Okay. Those in favor, please raise your hand. We have uh, everyone except Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, how are you voting? Vote no. All right. So Jerry votes no. Everyone else is in favor. Uh, you can see that we appreciate you bringing to the table our consideration, something that we had not given uh, proper weight to, and we've adjusted accordingly. And I thank you all for coming in and helping us uh, form our recommendations for the ballot. You didn't go through the other ones? We did. We, we already went through all the other ones. I assume that there still is no further desire for reconsideration on any of the other Warren articles for SAU 90, is that correct? Yes. Okay, that is correct. Okay. So we're, we're done with SAU 90. Thank you very much for your help uh, in, in helping us be more accurate in our recommendations.